everybody. Blue. I got my book in my hand, corner stores in the middle of the block. And my other one is, don't beat your children or they'll turn out like me. That's me when I was 16. So listen, um, the game that politicians play with black people is they always talk about black and Latino votes. You know, when they want votes, they always say we need black and Latino votes. And this is black politicians that do this. But you never hear Latino politicians say we need the black and Latino vote. They speak for Latinos and Latinos only. Now, here I am in Washington Heights, right? This is where I grew up. I grew up in this block right here. Now I grew up in that block, 160. And like, you notice, like every store you see, most of these stores, 90, most of these stores, except for probably that T-Mobile, all these stores are owned by people from the neighborhood. And most of them speak Spanish. You know, so like I said, everybody comes to America to correct their poverty. And they use their language to build a community. They use their language to build a fence around their community. This, in a sense, is the community because the money stays in the neighborhood. You know, like everything you see up here is owned by Latinos in the neighborhood. But when you go to a black neighborhood, most of the businesses in that black neighborhood are not owned by black people from that neighborhood. Like I told you, the Arabs run the corner stores, the Chinese and the Asian people run the hair care products, the nail care products, the, the, the liquor stores, the Chinese food restaurants. And the funny thing about, the funny thing about like most African hair care products is not even made by Africans. That money don't go back to Africa. They just use the African logo. But back what I was like saying is like politicians or black politicians always talk about the black and Latino vote. They're really shamming black people because what it boils down to is, like I said before, it's like Latinos have a language that's, that binds them. Black people don't have a language that binds us. That's why, you know, like, I don't see nothing wrong with speaking Ebonics. Ebonics is nothing but another form of communication. And people say, well, you can't get a job in the real world if you're speaking Ebonics. So what? Only thing you're doing when you're creating a job in the real world is you're creating wealth for white people. That's what you're doing, and that's the problem with black people, is black people have no businesses in black neighborhoods. You know, like everybody, even like when the Indians come to America, they're working at Dunkin' Donuts, or they're working at gas stations like they do in Detroit. But black people think we're too big for that. But like I was saying, it's like politicians always talk about black, black politicians always talk about black and Latino votes. But you never hear, you never hear Latino politicians say we need the black and Latino vote. They speak for Latinos and Latinos only. Like I said, because they have a language that binds them. And everybody comes to America to correct their poverty and they use their language to build a fence around their community. Black people were already here. But we don't have a language to build around our to build a fence around our community. And that's why black neighborhoods are so easily and um so easily uh I can't think of the word. This is why black neighbor. This is why people are so easy to come into black neighborhoods and open up black businesses because black people welcome them with open arms. Just something I thought I'd say. All right, y'all. I'm out.